Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a review on the Everlast MX2 Face Saver headgear. So stay tuned. All right guys, so today I'll be doing a close-up weigh-in and review on the Everlast MX2 headgear, which is also uh, a nose bar face saver. They currently do not offer an open face or cheek protector style headgear um, in the MX2 lineup. They just have this face saver, which is the same as they did for the original MX uh, for the headgear, which was a face saver as well. Now. Uh, this is handmade in Mexico using all full genuine leather construction. It does have a good amount of weight to it. We'll put it on the scale here in a second to see the actual weight of it. Uh, but that's to be expected. It does use a steel uh, bar uh, for the nose bar that goes around. Uh, the good thing about using metal is that you can actually compress it or you can expand it and kind of mold it if you have any kind of like uh, pressure points on your head. Um, and just like the gloves, it has this dark maroon reddish uh, color. Um, the leather on here is very nice, high quality. Some of the best I've seen from Everlast. You have the logo right there on the, the temple. Um, on the front, you have the stitching in the middle right there, uh, the face bar. It does a MX right there. Um, and then you also have the laces that go towards the bottom. Um, the chin strap is a Velcro chin strap uh, that goes into this little slot right there. That is all made of leather. Um, the top closure is also a piece of Velcro on top made of leather as well. And you can see the crown also has laces that's integrated into the crown of the face saver. And then the rear is also a Velcro closure. And you have, I'd say maybe about three quarters of an inch of padding um, on the back of your head. And then one of my favorite upgrades that they did or improvements should I say uh, with the face saver is they implemented kind of this micro suede liner on the inside. I guess the main drawback with that is that it, it tends to kind of soak up sweat. So you do have to let it air out and dry. But the good thing about it is that it's comfortable and it prevents the face saver from sliding around for the most part. I mean, you're never gonna have a headgear that's 100% that's just gonna sit in the same position the entire time. It's gonna shift when you take a punch, but that's expected. Um, it's basically made in Mexico right here on the this tag as well as a uh, I don't know what the PO is, maybe the purchase order or whatever that is, serial number. Made in Mexico on the back. And then the ear donuts are about an inch in thickness that has about a medium density to it. Uh, and then you have the leather uh, flap that goes across, like a leather uh, crossbar. Um, so you do have about an inch padding uh, on both sides. And uh, just to show you guys again, the inside, kind of the stitching, close up of that. It does have that nice, strong, leather smell to it um, and just like again like the gloves the leather on here is really nice high quality premium leather they use on here so let's go ahead and turn the scale on and see how much this headgear weighs in ounces um, let's see if I can put it probably, that's probably the best way to put it using the so we're looking at one pound uh, and 9.6 ounces so 16 plus nine is going to be for uh, 25.6 ounces. So it is a heavy uh, headgear. Um, so do keep that in mind. I mean, if you're looking for something that's lightweight, you're not gonna be getting it with this. If you're looking uh, for something that you want uh, good nose protection. You don't wanna get hit in the face directly. Um, there's a trade-off. So it's gonna be a little heavier, but you do get definitely more protection, especially for your nose. So. Let's go ahead and do the review. Hey, what's up guys? Carlo here and today I'm doing a review on the Everlast MX2 face saver headgear. This retails for $199 on the Everlast website. It's handmade in Mexico with full genuine leather construction and it comes in a one size fits all configuration with the rear Velcro adjustment as well as a top crown Velcro adjustment as well as a Velcro chin strap. It comes in this dark red maroon colorway. Uh, it looks really nice, which I wish they actually had more colors to offer, uh, which maybe they will later down the road. 
I found that it was a little weird that when they released the MX2 line a couple weeks ago that the gloves come in, in multiple colorways. You can get the gloves in like white, black, uh, limited edition gold, as well as this dark red. Uh, but they only offered the headgear and the no foul groin protector in this, this red colorway. So uh, I thought they would at least give you a choice to have a set of different colors. So if you got the gold gloves, you can have the gold headgear with the gold uh, no foul protector. Same thing with the white, the white headgear, white no foul protectors. That way you can match if you wanted to, but maybe later down the road, they'll end up offering that. Now, I've had this headgear for probably about a month now, maybe a little bit over that. Um, it's been part of my rotation in sparring. I was really interested to see how this thing would perform um, in terms of the improvements it made from the original MX headgear um, and if there's anything else I felt that could be improved. And there's definitely some really nice things about this headgear, but I still feel that there's more room for opportunity for this to be even better. And I think that Everlast left some improvements on the table that they should have done with this headgear. Uh, granted with the amount of time they probably had from the original to develop this one. Again, I feel like if you have that amount of time, you should be able to just put every every resource and everything you can to make this the ultimate headgear, especially when you have such high expectations. But again, that's just my opinion on that. When you're looking at this headgear, one thing you'll notice is that the leather on here, the quality is really nice, just like their, their gloves. Uh, it's probably some of the best leather Everlast has ever used in their uh, in their equipment um, that I've seen. So the leather on here feels really nice and thick. It actually has more of kind of a matte satin finish to it. You do have the Everlast logo right here on the temple. You also have the lace up that kind of laces up the crown. On top you have the top Velcro adjustment, which I wish was laces. Again, I've never been a fan of Velcro when it comes to headgears just because you don't get the same kind of snug, uh, custom conforming feel that you get with laces with Velcro. It just feels a little bit more generic in my opinion. Um, and then you have the actual face bar. So you have the stitching that goes down the middle. The bar inside is actually made out of steel. And the nice thing about that is anytime you get a face bar uh, headgear is oftentimes you'll get one area on your head that's like the temple, your forehead, maybe your cheeks, or your lower jaw portion that you feel pressure on. And the good thing about using steel or aluminum compared to like a plastic is that you can mold it. So you can either compress it or you can expand the headgear to relieve any pressure points that you may feel. So I definitely like the fact that they implemented that with this headgear. You have the MX right there on the lower portion. Um, the lower part of the headgear also has the laces that stitch it in. You have the Velcro strap for the chin strap that has this tab on the other side that, that this goes right through. Pretty basic right there. The ear donuts are about an inch in thickness of medium density padding with the crossbar. And these donuts do a really nice job of protecting your, your ears as well as your eardrums and doing its best possible job of preventing you getting that cauliflower ear and blood, busting those blood vessels on your ear. So uh, that's really nice. You also have the rear Velcro adjustment again. It is what it is. I wish this was lace up because I feel it would be a much more customized fit. And you have about a three quarter inch uh, back of the head pad right here to protect the back of your head. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the Velcro back on here. And it does say made in Mexico. And probably my favorite feature is gonna be the inside liner, which is this black micro suede liner, very similar to what Rival has been doing with their headgear, like in the RHG20. Um, the IntelliShock headgear. Uh, I like this, there's a trade-off because it, it does tend to kind of soak up sweat. So you do have to be aware of making sure that you dry this headgear out when you're done using it. Don't just throw it back in your bag and let it sit there and fester and get stunk, stinky and musty. Make sure you take your headgear out, let it air dry and do yourself a favor. It keeps the longevity of it better and it doesn't stink. Uh, but the huge benefit is that it doesn't slide around. So. If you have headgears that use the same kind of leather on the outside that they do on the inside, then you'll know that when you, when you start to sweat, it just slides around on your face, especially when you get hit. And uh, this micro suede material is really good in that respect, uh, preventing you from having to uh, continually readjust your headgear. So it's made in Mexico, all right there as well. So overall, I mean, the quality on here is really nice. The leather looks really good. It is a little bit on the heavy side. You know, when you get pick this thing up right out of the box, you can definitely tell there's some weight to it. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, there's a trade-off, you know, and 
Me personally, um, I've always been a, a fan of open face cheek protector headgears just because I feel that um, I have better defense. I can see the punches, especially the uppercuts coming a lot better. And I feel a little bit more mobile with being able to move my head and just kind of getting around punches to me, which is the best defense because you don't want to get hit. With this, sometimes with these face savers, you feel like you're a little bit too reliant on this nose bar section. So you get a little bit too confident and uh, in taking punches. So you might end up eating more punches that, than you typically would if you didn't have a nose bar headgear. And not saying that you can't move your head or, or work on your defense. I just feel that when you have this nose bar headgear, you don't get the same level of vision and visibility that you do with the open face. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this on my head. And one thing I do is I adjust the circumference strap right here to the, the size of my head as well as the top strap. So I just pre-adjust that. So only thing you have to do once you have the back adjustment where it needs to be in the top adjustment is slide it on your head and then just put on the chin strap. So you should have a pretty snug fit when you put it on. The other thing, just kind of adjust it. And like all face saver head gears, what's, when you put this on is that the face saver is going to be sitting at an angle so what ends up happening is when you do take a punch a straight punch this bar actually drops towards your mouth rather than jamming right into your nose so um, the good thing about this face saver is that when i got hit in the face with this there was never any point that this bar actually hit my nose so obviously it's, it's doing its job what it's intended to do so the chin strap i'm going to slide this on so you guys can see that I wish that this chin strap was a quick clip system to save yourself some time, convenience. Um, the other big thing with this chin strap being Velcro is that when you're sparring, at any point during your sparring, you know a lot of things going on when you're sparring, when you're working on the inside. I mean, you guys are bumping heads into each other, you're, you're moving, you're, if you're working on the inside. If this Velcro tab ends up kind of like coming loose and you got to turn into your sparring partner. If you ever gotten scratched really hard with Velcro, this can actually like give you like a skin, like a skin burn. Um, if you've ever seen that before with Velcro, if you ever gotten hit with Velcro really quick, it can actually cut into your skin and leave like a big scrape. So with this Velcro strap, I mean, I get the whole point behind it, but I just feel that there should be something here to kind of cover it like an additional, like maybe a flap to cover the Velcro so it can't come undone. And that way you don't end up like scraping your sparring partner with it. Or even better, get a quick clip and just clip it in like what winning does. I mean, they, it's been, it works fantastic. It's, it's proven to work. And why not just implement it on this headgear? I mean, you've done so much already in terms of the quality of it. Take that next step and put a quick clip system. You don't have to worry about using Velcro at all. That's just my opinion. And I think that would have worked a lot better than this current system so um but visibility is actually pretty good i mean i mean it's comparable to all the other face savers i've used i mean other than getting like a measuring tape and literally like going from one side here to this other side okay oh, i got like an extra two millimeters of it there's really i feel that it's it's pretty much the same um, i can definitely see the nose bar here so one thing to keep in mind is the punches that are coming upwards down to up like uppercuts you're not going to be able to see as well as like an open face headgear, which is obvious as common sense. But you know, my side vision, my peripherals is really good with this headgear. And the most important thing, when I took a shot, you can see that it actually doesn't jam into my nose. So again, it, it sits at an angle. I have good visibility. And when I take a shot straight in, you can see that it goes towards my mouth instead of jamming into my nose. And I got a pretty big nose. So that's, a good test and even when I was getting punched in the face at no point in time did this ever jam into my nose so really nice job of making sure that the ergonomics and that the placement of the bar is where it needs to be at and the other good thing is that if the bar if you need to push it out a little bit more if you need a little bit more room between your nose and the bar I have maybe about a quarter of inch of space right here you can also also compress the headgear because it is a steel bar and it will kind of make this nose go out a little bit further uh, and if, compress it out so you could definitely do that um, coming to the side my ears are actually perfectly on spot where, where it needs to be at in terms of where the donuts are at so that feels really good uh, the back pad feels really good i have good rotational flexibility of my neck because of how it's tapered upwards 
and that feels good as well. Um, the chin strap location is good. It, it's not right on my throat or on my Adam's apple. It's right underneath my chin where it needs to be at. So again, proper placement of the chin strap is important for your comfort as well as, you know, if you do take a shot, you don't feel like the, the strap is actually pulling into your throat. So that feels good. So really good vision, excellent bar for your nose. It protects your nose. And the opening right here that you see, this oval opening, there's really no way a punch should get in here at all. I mean, you can see I'm doing this with my bare fist and I can't even get my hand in there. So obviously when you're sparring, you'll probably have, you know, on average 16 ounce gloves. That's, that's the glove size that most people use for sparring. There's no way a punch is gonna get into this hole, this opening right here. There's just no possible way you can even get it in there. So, um, you know, in terms of the ergonomics, it feels good, it's comfortable. The liner feels really good. The chin strap feels great. You know, I was really impressed with this headgear while I was using it, especially for a face saver. My only issue is gonna be using Velcro for the top and rear. I feel they should have used lace-ups. That's just my personal opinion. Um, and the other thing about using laces that you might've been able to cut down on cost. You, you wouldn't have all this extra leather that you're utilizing for the Velcro. If you just use lace-ups, it would have felt just as good, if not better and uh, it would have just been a much more comfortable fit. And then using a quick clip system for the chin, I thought would have been good. But overall, it's done a nice job. When I would get hit, it stayed in place for the most part. You can see that, you know, any headgear will shift around if you push it enough. But overall for this face saver, this micro um, suede, suede material does a really nice job of, of just kind of keeping the, the headgear stuck to my face. So overall, I'm really happy with this headgear. I'm definitely more, more impressed with this headgear than I am their gloves. To be honest with you, I felt like the gloves, the MX2 gloves had a lot of areas that they could have improved on. Uh, but be quite frank, I thought this headgear was really nice. At the price point of $199, I still think it's a bit high, uh, but just because there's so many other competitors out there that make great headgears, especially face savers. Um, you know, I think the quality is, is great. The, the microfiber liner or the, uh, the suede liner is great on the inside. Uh, I think if they just improved the rear and top closure adjustment, add a quick, quick clip system, excuse me, they would have a home run hitter uh, and offer more colorways. And I definitely think this would be probably one of the best selling face saver headgears you can get. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put a link in the description box where you can find this Everlast MX2 face saver headgear. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.